So who would have thought that when we went into lockdown in March 2020, that we'd still be in some sort of lockdown in June 2021? It's been a challenging time, hasn't it? It's challenged what we thought we knew. It's challenged what we do as church. It's challenged the way we do things at church. Nothing is the same, and nothing will ever be the same. And that's a good thing, but it's not an easy thing. A couple of weeks ago, we were given this passage from the Song of Songs. Listen, my beloved, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come. That would be nice. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. This is a really passionate poem about passionate love. And our God is the most passionate of lovers. One of the strongholds we identified in the church during Lent was apathy. And I wonder if that is because our faith has become tame. We've got stuck in a routine. It's possible for faith to become drained of every risk or passion or to be rationalized. Faith can even become humdrum and dull. And that's not what God wants for us at all. In the Song of Songs, when the lover arrives at the lover's home, he remains outside and he calls her to come out with him, to leave the security of her family and to come away with him. He's calling the girl to leave home and to run to go on an adventure with him in the wilderness. It's scary, but it's exhilarating, and it's an antidote to apathy. Jesus is calling us to a life lived with him, to an adventure. He's calling us to leave our safe places behind and to run with him. If you want another analogy, imagine that we're on a big sailing boat, in the middle of the ocean, directed and empowered by the wind of the Holy Spirit. We're not on a cruise ship which stops at predetermined ports. We go where the wind blows. And if there's no wind, it's pretty boring. A big sailing boat needs all hands on deck so what it does, so that it does what it's supposed to do. We are the crew of this, this boat, the people of God the body of Christ, every one of us is needed to sail this boat. The wind has changed direction since COVID, and we need to be ready to move with it. If we don't work together, we could end up floundering in the water or being becalmed in the doldrums. It's the Holy Spirit who leads us. It's the Holy Spirit who gives us vision. And together, we are called to take initiatives for God's kingdom. So what fires us up as a body? What gifts and experiences do we share that will benefit others? What is particular about our community, which God is calling us to reach out into? And as we look to the plans of the the diocese for our deanery, which means a possible merger of five parishes, Crookhorn, Purbrook, Portstown, Hart Plain, and Waterlooville. A merger into one possible parish. We find ourselves challenged. And I think God is calling us to widen our view, to come away with him. Back in February and March, many of us looked at the strongholds holding both our church and the community. In our last session, we looked at the way forward, and we came up with some goals. I've looked at the work that we did, and I believe that this is what God is calling us to do as a church. 
Our long-term goal is for COGS to be at the center of our community and for us to see people coming to Christ regularly. Obviously, this isn't going to happen overnight. It needs some, some planning, and it needs the Spirit, and it needs all of us. So what will it look like long term? I think it will... The, we, we've talked about things like a drop-in centre for advice for the, the, the Citizens Advice Bureau, the police, finance, form-filling, anything that we feel that or people tell us that they need, we're hoping that we can offer advice. It'd be great to have a coffee shop serving proper coffee and tea and sandwiches and cakes, maybe. It'd be great to have house groups in every street. Room for kids to play after school. Seven-day-a-week church. Activities going on all the time. Every activity connected to every other activity. Using try praying booklets or an invitation to another event, ready at every event. And finally, that COGS re reflects our community diversity. This is a diverse community. We don't reflect it in COGS at the moment. So that's, that's our goal. And we're a long way off that goal. <laughs> but what will it feel like? It'll feel messy. It'll feel scary. But it'll be exciting. It might be exhausting. But it'll be vibrant. It'll be busy. It'll be welcoming. It will give a community spirit. It will bring family. It will unite families. And be generous. And I love the fact that we are a generous church. Our, our finances show that we're a generous church financially, but we need to be a generous church with our time as well as our money. It's also expectant of what God is going to do. We're going to be so excited about what God is doing. And I think it will be uncomfortable to start with because our normal routine will be disturbed. And what do we need to do this? We need total reliance on God. And we need passion. We want people set on fire for God. And every member committed to being part of what God is doing. Obviously, it will need a lot of organization. It will need some training. It will need new leaders raised up. And it will mean, need tithing of money and time and resources. So how do we work towards this? We're going to uh, concentrate on discipleship to, dis to ensure that everyone has a good relationship with Jesus. And if our discipleship is right, then actually everything else flows out from that. We're going to check, make sure that our welcome is good to ensure that no one feels unloved. And, and welcome also includes our presence out on the, on the internet as well, so our website, our social media presence. We're going to look at our outreach, reaching out to our community in lots of different ways. And of course, everything needs to be underpinned in prayer. And we've made a really good start this last year. We, have, we are praying our socks off and, uh, every day, at all hours of the day. And it's wonderful to see. And I believe that God is really moving at this time because we're praying. We are starting to see doors opened up to us. And I, I find it really exciting, and I hope you do too. So, in fact... Those four are our four pillars. So we're still concentrating on the four pillars that we set last year, or probably when you did um, uh, leading your church into growth. Um, so and we're going to still base everything on the, on the foundation of love, grace, mercy, and truth. So but to begin with, we've got some short-term goals. So we, we, as soon as we are able to, we would like to set, put up, 
put on a, a, a church family event, a barbecue or something that we can invite the whole church to so that we can sort of reconnect with one another and, and enjoy one another's company and eat together and, and just share fellowship. As soon as we can, we will do that. <laughs> We're also going to be putting on some community events um, this year as soon as we are able. So um, in September, we're putting on a Green Fun Day, which Sarah and um, Christine are organizing, I think. Um, involving, it's going to involve schools and the community. We want, we want it to be a big thing that people recognize that we need to do something about our, our world. But it also helps them to see that the church is here and that we are at the center of this community. We're going to do um, a remembrance service for all those who have struggled through, through lockdown when they've, because they've lost someone. But it's also a sort of thanksgiving service for, for those who want to say thank you for getting us through this. So it's another thing, a community event that we can invite people to. And of course, the fun run is the next thing that's happening in, at the beginning of July. And that's another place where we can say we're here and, and we're here for you. Um, just allowing people to know that, that God is on their case. We're going to bring back, not that we ever started it, we tried to do Messy Church just the, the same month as lockdown happened. We will bring Messy Church back um, it may change when the when the new parish system comes into, into effect. We don't know, but we're going to go for it anyway because we feel that we want to um, bring family, new families um, into knowing, knowing God. So that will hopefully start in September as well. The bus stop ministry had a great start on Thursday. We had really good reports of how well it was accepted um, and received. People... People came, they were, um, that we got rid of loads of coffee and cake, and people were genuinely pleased that we were there. And so we would love to expand that ministry and to expand the ministry of the hub as well, um, to, to look, at, look a bit further afield um, and see what we can do with that. Um, we also want to focus on the precinct. We are neighbours with our precinct. Um, and we want to do as much as we can in our precinct to go out into the community and not wait for them to come to us. So it, we want it to become a natural part of what we do. It's not, it's not just an extra thing. It's what we do naturally. So we we'd, um, have people on the precinct a, a lot of the time. We want to show that we're different and we have something that is amazing that we can offer people. People need to know that there is something amazing. Um, and I... A part of that is accepting people for who they are um, and, and using the language that they will understand and not our um, strange Christianese. So we're going to try and ask questions about what people want um, and not, not assume that we know what they want because we don't. We need to get to know people. We also need better communication. So um, we need to get um, better at communicating about what's happening in this church. I think we are improving our communication. We've got lots of banners and posters out, but uh, we, we're putting stuff in the schools. Um, but I think we can still get better. We, we want to um, share some good news stories, some good community stories. And I, I think it, there's even, it's even worth doing some, so, something like um, a community newsletter. Um, whether that is us or we work with the community to do that, but that's something that we can, we can do. Um, obviously, it needs someone to organise that. <laughs> and Claire and Fleur are doing an excellent job um, growing the COGS Children and Toddlers Facebook um, page, and we need to be better at doing that for the adult page. So we also need um, a Facebook champion for, um, for doing that. See, all these things need people. None of this will happen because I can't do it all. So all of them, they're all great ideas. And these are all ideas that came out of that Lent course. But they all need people to, to get on board and run with them. 
Lastly, we're going to um, offer some different styles of services as well. So probably separate from a Sunday morning, maybe Sunday evenings or even a, a, a weekday evening, um, something like we did for Quiet Waters. Um, we're thinking about doing a prophetic workshop in September, so that may be something you're interested in, and then moving to having some regular uh, services uh, working in the prophetic, which sounds exciting. I think it's going to be quite a busy year, <laughs> but I think God is in this. God is actually calling us out. So when we look back at the passage from the Song of Songs, we see the promise of new life. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come, the cooing of doves is heard in our land, the fig tree forms its early fruit, the blossoming vines spread their fragrance, the harvest is coming, and Jesus is calling his church, arise, my darling, come, my beautiful one, come with me. We are being called out of our comfort zone. We are, the church is known to God as my darling. That's who he's calling, the church. Come out, come with me. So we're being called out of our comfort zone. But can we trust God enough to allow him to bring change? Not just in Cogs and Crookhorn, but also in the wider area of our possible new parish, working alongside other churches? Can we trust God enough to be able to give people away to resource other churches? Can we trust God enough to be able to give up certain ministries for the good of other churches' ministries? Can we trust God enough to let go for the sake of the kingdom? Can we be generous with what God has blessed us with and include the wider parish in our vision? Last week, we were given a strange word. Two farmers each had five shillings. They both bought grain with their money. The first farmer sowed his grain out of season. The second waited until the proper season. But when the proper season came, there were three months of drought. So he was unable to plant his grain. So neither had a crop. And that's where it ended. So we were a bit flummoxed as to what that meant. It was very specific. The five shillings was very specific, but it had no ending. So I brought it to the prayer group at nine o'clock this week. And this is what we think it means. Five shillings is a crown. Revelation 4, 10 to 11 says, The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. It's God who is in control, and he is calling us to new things. He doesn't want us to do things the way that we've always done them. He doesn't want us... Um, I think he's calling us to look further afield. Sorry, he, I'll start that again. I, didn't, I missed a whole line out. He's calling us to new things. He doesn't want us to do things our way. So that's planting out of season. He doesn't want us to do things the way we've always done them, planting in season. He wants us to do things his way. He's calling us to look further afield than cogs. He's got other plans, and it's not business as usual, but business God's way. It may feel uncomfortable. It may even feel precarious. We may be confused about what comes next. But God is asking us to trust him, to lay our crowns before him and let him lead us. And we will have the seed for planting in God's timing. Our role is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We've been given a job to do. Matthew 28 reminds us, 
Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We're not alone. But God does want us to step out of our comfort zone and into exhilarating life with him, trusting that the wind of the Spirit will lead us where he wants us to go. And the more we trust, the more like Jesus we will become and learn to live as Jesus, living incarnationally, showing what God is like, being incarnational where we are. Amen.